Mr. President, yesterday the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by half a percentage point, the biggest rate hike in 22 years. The effort is underway to stop inflation. For millions of American families who are struggling to pay their bills and afford the basics, this can't come fast enough. The U.S. economy has added nearly 1.7 million jobs this year. Consumer spending is strong. But higher costs for groceries, gas, housing, and more are straining family budgets and making people very anxious about their future. In announcing the interest rate yesterday, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said the following, the biggest drivers of inflation today are higher prices caused by Russia's war on Ukraine and rising COVID cases in China, which could further disrupt supply chains. In other words, the Federal Reserve Chairman said, two of the biggest drivers of inflation are really global. They're complicated and they aren't gonna be solved by America alone. Fortunately, there are some simple solutions we can take to help families save money. Let me tell you about three of them. The first is to cut gas prices. I can't think of a single cost of living that is more visible. Every street corner in America has a sign declaring what the cost of a gallon of gasoline is. And people compare these in their mind even as they drive down the road. Some people make a hobby of it. Anyone who's filled up a gas tank in the last few months has felt the sticker shock of Mr. Putin's war on Ukraine. President Biden has already made two changes that will reduce gas prices. A little over a month ago, he announced the U.S. will release one million barrels of oil a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. In other words, to increase the supply in an effort to bring down the price. One million gallons a day for six months while oil companies ramp up domestic production to make up the shortage caused by Mr. Putin's war. President Biden also has issued an emergency fuel waiver allowing E15 gas, that's gas with a higher blend of ethanol, to be sold across America this summer. Normally, E15 isn't sold in the summer. But the White House estimates that by allowing gas stations to sell it, it'll save Americans 10 cents a gallon. Of course, if we're really serious about cutting gas prices and reducing the power of tyrants like Putin, whose nations happen to sit on big oil reserves, we can do that by investing more in electric cars, clean energy sources that don't break the bank or bake the planet. Here's another solution that can save millions of families hundreds of dollars every single month. Let's agree to cap the monthly cost of insulin for diabetes at $35. In 1923, almost 100 years ago, researchers in Canada were awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery of insulin to manage diabetes. They sold the patent, listen carefully, sold the patent for this drug discovery for one dollar. They wanted to make sure that no one would ever profit from this life-saving drug. Fast forward a hundred years. Something has gone terribly wrong. The same vial of Humalog insulin that Eli Lilly sell sells for $40 in Canada, it charges $350 for in the United States. 40 in Canada, 350 here. The maker of Lantus Insulin has raised their price more than 26 times since the year 2000, from $35 to more than $300 today, 26 price hikes in 22 years. The cost of insulin can range from a couple hundred dollars a month to more than a thousand dollars a month. That's the price this year. Who knows how much it'll be next year? Who bears the burden of these costs? Patients and families. There are 37 million Americans who have diabetes. The number goes up every year. Senator Warnock of Georgia has introduced a critical bill, the Affordable Insulin Now Act, to cap the monthly cost of insulin at $35 a month. I'm a co-sponsor. Many senators are. Senator Collins and Senator Shaheen are spearheading a similar bipartisan effort to support it. 
I urge more of our Republican colleagues to listen to the people they represent. There are lots of people struggling to afford insulin in their states as well as the blue states. Let's do this together. Can't we agree on one thing in the United States Senate that we're going to do to help America this year? I think this is a good project and a good goal. A third way we can reduce inflation is a little more complicated, but it's worth talking about. We need to rein in the excessive fees charged by Visa and MasterCard for their product. We had a hearing yesterday. It was in the Senate Judiciary Committee. It was on something called a swipe fee. And of course, a swipe fee is the amount of money that has to be paid in order to move that piece of plastic through the machine. Most consumers don't even know it exists. Every retailer knows it exists. It was the first hearing our committee has held on this topic in 16 years. 16 years, and I was there 16 years ago. I walked into the Senate Judiciary Committee, chaired by the senator from Pennsylvania, Arlen Specter, and the hearing was on swipe fees and interchange fees. I'd never heard of the term before, and I sat down and I learned. What happened in that meeting was a, an exposition of the current situation for every restaurant that you go to buy a meal in, every store that you shop in, all the grocery stores, any store that takes plastic knows what a swipe fee or an interchange fee is. Here's how it works. Visa and MasterCard control over 80% of the credit and debit card markets in the United States. Starting point. It isn't as if you can walk away from these two companies and be a retailer in America. If you're going to take plastic, you're going to take one or both of these cards. And every time a card with a Visa or MasterCard logo is swiped, in other words, at the retailer, Visa and MasterCard charge a fee that takes a cut out of whatever the transaction amount turns out to be. Now, some of that Visa and MasterCard interchange fee, they keep for themselves. Most of it is given to the bank that issues the card. The fee that MasterCard and Visa require the card accepting merchant to pay, the card issuing bank is the interchange fee. It's usually charged as a percentage of the transaction, plus a fat, flat fee. For example, 2% of whatever the transaction cost is, plus 10 cents. How does that work out in practice? Just an example. Say you buy $100 worth of groceries or kids' clothes on your credit card. After the fees are deducted, the merchant gets $98, maybe a little less. For merchants operating on tight profit margins, and that's all, most of them, these fees can add up to a big problem. Laura Carrot was one of our witnesses yesterday. She's an amazing woman. What a resume. She's the CEO of a supermarket chain known as Giant Eagle. It's a regional American-owned chain of grocery stores based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At our hearing yesterday, she explained that her industry, groceries, typically operate on a 1% profit margin. 1%. So the 2% swipe fee wipes out their entire profit. What do they do? Well, there's only one obvious answer. They raise the prices to cover the high swipe fees required by Visa and MasterCard. And customers end up holding the bag. Remember, we started this conversation about inflation. Make no mistake, what I've just described to you is inflationary. Swipe fees just aren't annoying to the retailers. They're anti-competitive. Ms. Carrot told us a story that April the 22nd, she received the latest modification of the swipe fees that's being charged to her businesses by Visa and MasterCard. She said the modification was 300 pages long, almost unintelligible. Handed it over to her accountants and to her lawyers and said, make some sense out of it. What are they doing to me? The banks get the swipe fees, but the banks do not set the fees. Banks let Visa and MasterCard do the behind the scenes work and fix the fees. That means that all the thousands of card issuing banks in the Visa and MasterCard network receive the, same, receive the same exact schedule of swipe fees for merchants, regardless of whether they're efficient or inefficient, 
regardless of whether or not they're preventing fraud or victims of it, is free lunch for the banks. When the fee rates go up, as they did in just a few weeks ago, banks make more money every time people use plastic, debit, or credit cards, and they issue more cards. That benefits Visa and MasterCard, who take their cut, called a network fee, out of each swipe. So Visa and MasterCard have an incentive to keep raising fees. What can merchants do? Well, you might think they'd sit down at the table and say, we're going to bargain about this fee, Visa and MasterCard. We object to it being raised, and we want to let you know that if you want to do business in our business, that's the way it'll be. That doesn't happen at all. This is non-competitive. Visa and MasterCard control 84 85% of the plastic market in America. They say to the grocery store, to the restaurant, to the shop, take it or leave it. Play by our rules or you won't play at all. We just won't even let people present their cards at your business. Visa and MasterCard tell merchants if they want to accept payment from the thousands of banks in their net, want to be able to accept payment from thousands of banks in their networks, the merchants must agree to Visa and MasterCard's fees and terms. Take it or leave it. Only merchants can't leave it. Visa and MasterCard, as I said repeatedly, control over 80% of the credit and debit card market. Incidentally, the figures for 2020 show that uh, the, I'm going to roughly approximate these and I'll clear them up in the record. $80 billion in transactions using debit cards. $60 billion in transactions using credit cards in the year 2020. How does that compare with cash and check? Cash, if I remember right, was $28 billion compared to $140 billion for plastic. And what about checks? How many people are writing checks? It was worth $5 billion in transactions compared to plastic, which was over $140 billion. The reality is when swipe fees go up, and they do regularly, that cost gets built into the price consumers pay at the checkout counter and at the gas pump. Remember those gas prices? You wonder why they're hitting $4 a gallon, $5 a gallon? They include the swipe fees, the credit card fees, the debit card fees that are being added on to the cost of gasoline. Take a look at this chart. In the 16 years between the first hearing in the Senate Judiciary Committee that I have attended on swipe fees and now, Visa and MasterCard have imposed $794 billion in swipe fees, fees passed on directly to American families and consumers. Staggering amount, $794 billion for the hidden fee you never see. And Visa and MasterCard just raised these fees, again, two weeks ago. Senator Marshall, my Republican colleague from Kansas and I, sent him a letter saying, this is exactly the wrong time to be raising your fees. Tough enough for these businesses trying to hire people and get back in business after COVID-19. Tough enough for families who are fighting inflation. Why do you have to raise them now? You're very profitable companies. And the banks are doing quite well too, I might add. They did it anyway. These fee increases are adding to inflation and the market can't fix the problem because the credit and debit card market isn't competitive. The retailers have no voice in what that fee is going to be. It's take it or leave it. Visa and MasterCard have what they call a duopoly. It's not a monopoly, one company controlling everything. But these two companies, Visa and MasterCard, control over 80% of the plastic market. Well, what can we do about it? Well, at our hearing, we talked about several responses. First. Let's bring transparency to the market. The last thing that either Visa or MasterCard want to see is sunlight. People understanding what they're charging, why they're charging, the impact it has on prices, the impact on inflation. They want this to continue to be a deep, dark secret buried in 300 pages of legal gobbledygook that they send to their retailers. If consumers knew how much their Visa and MasterCard purchase cost at the local restaurants or businesses, they might try using a less costly card, and there are some out there. It'd be like giving the business a tip, and it would help bring down prices. 
So why not require banks to show on that monthly statement that they send to us with their credit and debit card transactions how much of that was swipe fees? They could do it in a second. They wouldn't dare. They can't ever embrace transparency. That is just not part of this process. It's all in secret and code and legal gobbledygook. I'll bet that would open a lot of eyes if we saw each month how much we're paying in swipe fees. Incidentally, Ms. Carrot talked about her supermarket chain. She said the three main expenses that we have for my supermarket chain in Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Ohio, number one, labor costs, understandable. Number two, rent, that's understandable as well. Number three, credit and debit card swipe fees. She estimated that it's going to cost her a million dollars or more in her businesses based on what Visa and MasterCard just did to raise the cost. Here's another way we can reduce inflation. Let's prevent Visa and MasterCard from hiking swipe fees up to unreasonable levels. Yesterday, I pointed out that in Canada, the most commonly used debit card system called Interac operates with interchange fees of zero. There's no interchange fee. All the arguments that the banks and credit cards make in this country about why they have to charge these retailers these hidden fees disappear in Canada because why? The government stepped in and said, we're going to regulate this. We're not going to let the banks and the credit and debit card companies dictate the policies in our country. And they're not alone. The European Union did the same thing, and there's a long list of other countries that are moving in that same direction. It operates quite well in these countries with low fraud and high consumer satisfaction. We don't have to eliminate interchange fees altogether, but for goodness sakes, we ought to make sure they're not excessive and not adding to inflation. There are two ways we can do it. Promote, promote something called competition. Are you a dyed-in-the-wool capitalist? Do you believe in a free market? I'll bet you believe in competition, don't you? There's no competition on these fees. It's a take it or leave it. These plastic companies dictate these terms to their retailers that, that honor their cards. We can promote competition by giving merchants more options on each of the swipes or place reasonable limits on their fees. Other countries, as I said, have figured it out. Many countries around the world say that swipe fees are a fraction of what they are, the cost of them are a fraction of what they are here because those nations limit Visa and MasterCard. We're afraid to tackle the giants. Our government and the people that work in this chamber, many of them are frightened by the size of Visa and MasterCard. I didn't get that message. Well, we can do better here. And if we do, consumers and competition will benefit. The bottom line is this. If you're serious about reducing costs for American families, get serious about reining in swipe fees. Visa, MasterCard, interchange, and swipe fees are adding to the fires of inflation every single day, and they're doing it in secret. Is that what we want in our economy? Is that what American families need at this moment in history? I think not. Mr. President, I yield the floor. Suggest the absolute quorum. The clerk will call the roll.